Good morning, Cross Creek Church. Good to see you here this morning. My name is Gary. I'm the counseling pastor here. And it is my joy to gather with you to celebrate the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to quote Psalm 118.24 together. It says, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. So say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Some of you need to keep talking to yourself because I can tell you're not quite believing that by the look on your face. But I know maybe your heart does, so your mouth will follow with a grin soon, right? Boy, this is the day. We're so glad that you're here today to celebrate, to worship together. If you're a first-time guest to Cross Creek, let me say welcome. We're so glad that you would join us. We'd love to get better acquainted with you. If you didn't stop by the welcome tent, uh, please let us know a little bit about yourself through the online app. You see that uh, QR code in front of you on some of the chairs? Uh, grab your cam camera off your phone. Take a picture of that. That QR code will lead you to uh, several different things where you can connect with Cross Creek Church. One of them is to tell us a little bit about yourself. Church, if you have prayer requests, if you need to set up a meeting to talk with one of the pastors, uh, perhaps you're wondering about different events coming up, use that same QR code or your Cross Creek Church app. And yes, we have an app that's very beneficial, you, very practical. Matter of fact, if you have it, open up your app right now. You'll find the Sunday sermon notes on there. And then also some coming events, which I want to talk to you about. So if you have your app, open it up. You'll see, first of all, that we have the ladies' Christmas party coming up next Saturday, December the 19th, right here at church. And so there's several things about that that you'll want to know, ladies. It's always a good time, kind of an annual tradition that we have here. Then we also have the Christmas Eve service. Without looking at the app, you could probably tell me what day that's on. Very good. Isn't that cool how we do that around here? We kind of time those things, Christmas Eve service. Let's do it on Christmas Eve this year. We're very, very practical like that, yeah. And sarcastic too, right? So uh, please note that they're at 3 o'clock and 4.30. The app says 3 to 5, but uh, if you read on uh, down, the paragraph tells you 3 o'clock is one service. We have another service later, identical service, if you can't come at 3, at 4.30, invite your family. We have invite cards to invite your neighbor. This is a great time. People love to celebrate Christmas at Christmas Eve with a traditional uh, uh, church service, so invite them. It's an easy invite. Can you say that? Say easy invite. Easy invite. Almost as easy as saying that. Then we also have uh, some several other things coming up you'll notice on the Cross Creek app as well. We have the Cross Creek After Christmas Special at 9 o'clock on Sunday. And uh, there won't be a, a Sunday service in here like we always have. There will be one online. So at 9 o'clock, that will be cast live. And you can watch it then or you can watch it a little bit later at your convenience. But that will be Christmas Day. No service here. It will be online. Well, listen, when we gather together to worship, one of the ways we worship is by singing, which we're going to do in about 30 seconds. But before we mention that, there's other ways we uh, worship, and that is by serving and by giving of our offerings. Uh, one of the things that you can do is to honor God, and the ministries that take place here are all funded by the different offerings and donations. We've seen incredible things happen in 2021 through your offerings and teaching the Word of God and reaching souls uh, t lives being changed in Fountain Valley and around the world. So you can give by putting your offering in the offering boxes in the back of the auditorium. As well, you can give online. You can use that QR code and give as you worship. All right, let's stand together and let's continue to worship in song together. If you're ready to worship the Lord, say, I am.
Let's try this one more time. One.
gathered here this morning, Lord, we, we come to lift your name in praise. We come uh, this time of year to celebrate the birth of your son. And um, Father, how grateful we are that, uh, that you did that you did find it necessary to, to send your son to have that relationship with us. There is only one way to have a relationship, and that's through your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I just, uh, I can't thank you enough for how gracious you are, how awesome you are, and that, Lord, that we can even have this opportunity, that we can stand before you and lift you in praise in your son's name. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. How are you guys doing this morning? Uh, my name is Michael, and I am thankful that you chose to worship with us today. Are you guys thankful that Jesus overcame? Um, that uh, even as we are in this series called Missing Peace, last week we learned that the fact that in this world, um, you will have trouble. Um, but as the song uh, repeats the, the words of Jesus, take heart. Why? Because I have overcome. And so through Christ, we can be overcomers. Um, uh, last week, we, as I said, we started this series called Missing Peace, and when you think about Peace, like uh, we, we celebrate the peace has come to this earth. Think about the Christmas season. And so last week we asked this question, is peace possible? All right? Is it possible to experience, to enjoy peace? And, and Isaiah, as we looked, Isaiah said that um, you can experience, you can have perfect peace. Right? Shalom, shalom. It's like peace on top of peace. But the only way to experience that is when you fix your eyes or you fix your mind on Christ, when uh, you fix your eyes, your mind on him and rest completely on him, that God gives us perfect peace. So here's, here's the question today, all right? Is peace possible with everyone? You don't have to answer, all right? And there's, there's a good, good chance when I, when I ask that question, there's a person that comes to mind. You guys know what I'm talking about? You know who I'm talking about? How many have that one person in your life? Some of you have, like, I have a whole group of people, right? Like, is peace possible with everyone? Because we all know people, there's always people in our lives that are a little harder to get along with, right? You guys have those people in your life? Am I the only one that struggles with getting along with, with everyone? Um, are, you, are you guys even awake today? Um, but if you know, if you notice in our culture, right, we live in a culture where we have um, this perpetual or an age of perpetual offense, right? Everybody, there's always somebody offended about someone or something. Like you turn on the news and somebody else is fired because of something they said because of, uh, somebody was offended. And we, we live in this perpetual age, uh, age of perpetual offense. And, and so when you think about this idea of offense, here's the, here's the reality. If you're looking to be offended, you will find it every time. And there are some people that just look for reasons to be offended. And, and if, if that's you, if you live in a, an age of, of perpetual offense, there is no win in that. Right? There is no win in always being offended. And I don't know if you guys have ever, ever bought a vehicle. And when you buy a vehicle, for some reason, all of a sudden you notice every other vehicle that's just like it. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like um, a, a few months ago, I sold my Jeep. Could have a moment of silence. And uh, with the money that I got from my Jeep, I went and bought this O2 Avalanche. And I didn't really know much about these trucks, but they're everywhere, all right? I see them all the time. Um, like, the only problem is, is now that I don't have a Jeep, I still wave at people, like the Jeep wave, and they don't wave back. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not in. So we gotta, i got to figure out an Avalanche wave. But if you're looking for something, you're going to find it. And, and I hope that we are not the people that are looking to be offended. But... If we are, what, what does the scripture say about that? Um, being offended is, is unavoidable. Right? People are going to offend you. Being offended is unavoidable, um, but living offended is a personal choice. Like you have a choice to live in that offense. Right? You have a choice to, to dwell in that offense. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, we're going to read verses 14 through 21. And when you think about what is it you're looking for? Are you looking for peace? Are you desiring peace? Or are you looking just to be offended? Romans 12, verse 14, it says this. Bless those who persecute you. All right? The first part of this verse tells us this is, this is maybe a message we're not going to enjoy. Right? Like, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Well, most of us are good with that. Weep with those who weep. 
Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one for e- evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Verse 18, this is kind of the, the key verse for this, this message. It says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Uh, Let's pray. God, we just thank you that that your word is alive, that it speaks to us. God, I pray that as we, we dive into this passage here in Romans chapter 12, Lord, that we would um, allow the Holy Spirit to maybe encourage us um, in places that we need to be encouraged uh, to teach us, um, as your word does, or, or maybe to rebuke us. If there's areas in our lives where we're choosing to live in offense, God, that we would be willing to, to confess that and that we would give it to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's, let's look at a, a few of these verses a little closer. Right? Verse 14, all right, first verse, bless those who persecute you. Now, I don't, you guys may be better than me, but that is not my natural response, right? If somebody punches me, what's, what's my natural response? Bless you. No, I'm coming back, right? Like, I mean, like, my mom raised no fool. Like, you punch me, I'm not going to turn the other cheek. Probably not, right? Now, some of you... Maybe you guys are super spiritual, super like Jesus, I don't know what I'm going to say, right? Maybe that's you, right? Like, hey, yeah, here's the other cheek. My brother, no lie, one time my, he was being a, my brother, and my, I think it was my dad. My dad slapped him, and my brother said, well, the Bible says to turn the other cheek, so I'm going to turn the other cheek. I don't know how my dad did not unload on him, but <laughs> my dad is, is a better man than me. Um, But bless those who persecute you. That is not natural. That is not something that we just normally do. But this this letter that he's writing, it lines up with what Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, as you read through that sermon. And so what what does this word bless mean? Right? It's the word eulogio, right? That's the Greek word. If If you hear that word, you may think of a different word, right? Eulogio, like English would be what? Eulogy, right? And it's kind of the same idea. The E-U in that word means good. All right? The logos is word. So it's a good word. So the understanding, the meaning, to bless those who persecute you is to speak well of. So we are to speak well of those who speak evil of us. We are to wish blessings on those who wish curses on us. Man, that is not something that I am just good at naturally but when he says this, this is the, the way this word is used. It's kind of like the, the word uh, go and make disciples. It's, it's a present imperative. It's not like a, a one-time thing, right? Somebody hurts you, all right, bless you. You know, like they sneeze, God bless you, right? It's not like it's, it's a perpetual thing that we continue to do it. It's like if possible, like he says, continue to bless those who continue to burden you, right? To continue to bless those who continue to to persecute you. Because if, if somebody just says something once in passing to me, all right, God bless them, all right, it's, I'll give it to God. But if they continue to do it, so he says, as they continue to do it, you continue to bless them back. Verse 18, he says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So as Christians, we are called, if possible. I love the fact that he says, if possible, Right? Because he knows some of you, or he knows that person that you're thinking of, right? If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably. So how do we do that? This goes back to our original question, is it possible? So how do we, as as followers of Jesus, how do we live at peace with those who are not peaceable? How do we live at peace with those who are unreasonable? How do we live at peace with those who continue to come after us? Now, to be very clear, we can't do it on our own. Right? It's, it's not just a matter of, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more uh, gracious. I'm going to have more peace in my life. I'm just going like, to do it. No, you cannot do it in your own. It's through the, the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And if you are a follower of Jesus, you have been gifted the Holy Spirit. And so it's through him that we're able to do this. But in Romans chapter 12, if you go back to verse 1, all right, kind of like how do we do this? How do we come in context with what is he saying? Because all throughout the, this letter to the Romans, what, what Paul is addressing is he's, he's trying to help them understand, try to help them like really grasp the goodness and the mercies of God. Right, so we have to go back to the beginning of this chapter to understand this, if possible, right? Bless those who persecute you. How is that possible? So in context, verse 1, Romans chapter 12. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So how can I, how can you, a person who normally would respond with, I'm, I'm not just going to get even, but I'm going to ahead, right? How does that, how do we as followers of Jesus respond peaceably to those who are coming after us. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore. Right? Now, whenever we hear or see the word therefore, we have to look to see what it's there for. Right? What is he saying? What is he referring to when he says, I appeal to you, therefore, the, by the mercies of God? What he's saying is this. He's like, in, in reading through this statement, basically saying, I want you to consider. Right? I want you in view of God's mercies. This is how you respond. Because when we, when we lose sight of how gracious God has been to us, when we lose sight of how forgiving God has been to us, when we lose sight of the mercies of God, it makes it that much harder to extend grace and mercy to other people. So he's saying, I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, or in view of, in light of, I want you just to consider, right? Consider how merciful God has been to you. And he says, what is your response. Some versions at the end of that verse would say this is, is a reasonable act of, of service. Like, what is reasonable for me to respond to God when he gave Jesus for me? So what is a reasonable response? When we think about his mercies, present your bodies as what? A living sacrifice. Right? What Paul is saying, when you consider, when you look at the mercies of God, your response is, to present your body as a living sacrifice, that I am going to come and I'm going to die to self daily. We love others by dying to self. I mean, isn't that what Jesus did? Right? Like Jesus lived, I mean, you think about the Christmas season. Why do we celebrate Christmas? Is it just because we get to give presents? Um, some of the kids are like, yes, all right. Well, it's because Jesus, 100% God, 100% man, was born in a manger. And he lived this perfect sinless life. Why? So that he could be the sacrifice for your sins. That's the mercies of God, that God gives us eternal life through the sacrifice of Jesus. So what is our, our response? It's to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Galatians chapter 2, Paul says this in verse 20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the only way possible for me, the only way possible for you to, to speak blessings to those who are speaking evil to you is to do it through Christ. Right? Because when, when you become a follower of Jesus, you are giving your life to Christ, and now you are living his life. And, and through that, how do we do it? It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is in you. And so through Christ, I now live through him. So let's go back to, to Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 16. All right, because here's, here's some indicators. How many of you, I wonder, you don't have to raise your hand, but when, you, when you're, the check engine light comes on, on on your car, right, it's, it's giving you a warning, right? And some of us, we go to the, the auto parts store and we just reset it, right? Like anybody else a resetter, like... I just don't want to see it on there. Oh, it's an O2 sensor. Like, that's 99% of the time, that's what it is, right? And I don't even know what that is, but I'm fine with it. So I'm just going to reset. I don't want to see the check engine light. So in this passage, there's some, there's some indicators that you are not going to be living at peace with other people, right? If these things are present in your life. So verse 16, let's look at it again. He says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, right? Haughty is just pride. 
Right? Don't, be, don't be filled with pride. He says, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Pride, when you are filled with pride, it will rob you of peace every time. And pride is, is something probably, I think pride is at the root of every sin. And when we're filled with pride, he says, don't be hiding. So if you're filled with pride, I can tell you right now, you're not experiencing peace. And you're experiencing pride. You're just filled up with yourself. Now, it's amazing to me, like a year and a half ago, I don't think any of us knew a, a, an expert in, in science. Right? Like, I didn't know any science experts, but now we all are one. Right? We were so like, oh, I, I know. You ever, like, have you ever tried to talk to somebody that is always right? right? And, and that's, the, like, we live in this uh, age of, of perpetual offense, but we also live in this age of, like, I am always right, and I am, like, the loudest one is the rightest one, right? Like, we can be so right that we can be wrong, right? And we, we filled with, with pride, and when we come filled with so pride, we, we can't understand, we can't listen to other people. And so he says, do not be puffed up, do not be haughty, do not be filled with really yourself. And because if you're filled with you, you're not filled with Christ. And he also says in that in verse 16, another indicator is, now, if he says, associate with the lowly. So what does that mean? It's to give yourself to a humble task. And it, nobody likes to, to work with, work under somebody who everything is beneath them. I mean, th- think about Jesus. Jesus, what did he say? If you want to lead, you need to what? Serve. And Jesus took on the lowest task. And he gets down and he washes the feet of the disciples. That's, that, that's the picture here. We say, do not be filled with yourself, but be willing to get down and, and serve other people that you would uh, associate with the lowly. He says it this in, in Ephesians chapter 4. This is how Paul says it. He says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You, if you're going to live at peace with everybody, you're going to have to make an effort. And it takes a greater effort for some people, right? Like you guys, we, we use this um, acronym, EGR. You guys know what the EGR people are? Extra grace required. And if you don't know any extra grace required people, you're the person, <laughs> Right? Like, you got a tag on your back of your shirt that says EGR, like be extra grace required. We have to make an effort to live in unity. You know, when you think about this idea of, of unity and peace, Jesus, do you know that Jesus, while he was on this earth, prayed for the church to be in unity, to be at peace with one another? John uh, 13 35 says this, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. See, why is, why is peace in the church so important? Why is it so important that, that we as followers of Christ, that we claim to be a part of the body of Christ, why is it so important that we live at peace with one another? Why is it so important that we, we're not easily offended? What well, he says there, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. This is proof of your relationship with Jesus that Broncos fans and Steelers fans can come together and worship. Right? That, by this show, now, I was reading a, a book this last month called Rediscover Church. And, and in this book, he, he was describing, kind of talking about church growth, right? And, and how some people uh, assume or kind of say, go about this idea of church growth, which I'm sure none of you really care much, uh, much about. But this, this is what he was, like the picture he was painting. Because in reading this and thinking about John chapter 13 and, and verse 35, it, it kind of came to light to me in, 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 in more detail. Because what, what they're saying is what some people tell you, if you want to build a, a, a group of people, a bigger group quicker, then you need to know who it is you're targeting, right? Your target audience. And if, if you want to get a group of people like, am, am I going to reach... As a church, we're going to reach a bunch of millennials. All right? Are we going to reach a bunch of baby boomers? Are we going to reach Gen X? 
And so we hone in on that, like whatever we decide, and the, the, the easier to get a, a bigger group is like, all right, we're going to reach these people, so we have to have this type of music, we have to have this type of um, coffee, right? Like we have to have this, time of, uh, this type of a message. The service has to last this long. And, and the whole idea is that if you will just focus on a certain group, then you'll, you'll be able to reach that group faster. Now, we understand that's, that's not the goal of the church, right? Hopefully we understand the goal of the church is not to fill the, just to fill a building, right? It's to, to um, save people from hell. And so what they're saying is like, that, that's not the goal. Now, do you, I, I'm guessing you guys know this, but as I told you, I bought an, an avalanche a couple months ago, and I didn't really know anything about those, but apparently they're kind of cultish. Like, I've had multiple conversations with people that say, is, like, is that your truck? Yeah. And um, they're like, well, I've had mine for 25 years. And, like, everybody's like, it's got, like, 2 billion miles on it. And, like, um, so even some, some, uh, somebody this week sent me, Roger sent me a link to a, a Facebook group for avalanche people. <laughs> wow, who knew, right? Now, there's a good chance some of you are in certain Facebook groups, right? Like, if you have a, a certain type of dog, I'm guessing, like I have a bull mastiff, I haven't looked, but I'm guessing there is a bull mastiff Facebook group, right? Some of you, maybe you're in a knitting Facebook group, like you don't have to, you don't have to confess, like we're we're not going to make fun of you, Um, but there's a group for everything, right? And and we want to be surrounded and we want to be in like this little group of of people. Now here's, here's when I, when I think about John chapter 13 and verse 35, here is why it is so important that we, as, as followers of Jesus, are at peace with one another. Because it is the evidence that we have a relationship with Jesus. Think about who he's writing here to in the early church. Remember the day of Pentecost when the disciples were in the upper room, and they're waiting. Jesus says, go back and wait. Right? Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They go outside. They begin preaching. And everybody, if you read through it, all of these different people and all these different languages are like, dude, I can hear him in my language. Right? Because there was a, a hodgepodge of people. But in their day and in their culture, they were very separated. Right? Remember as we looked at last, uh, last couple of weeks that, that uh, the Jewish people would not talk to the Samaritans? Right? The Romans would not associate with the Jews. That's why the, the tax, collector, tax collectors were such hated people. Again, it was a very segregated group. And what, when you see the early church, the day of Pentecost, 5,000 people from all different walks of life come together. What it's saying is like there's, there is something special about when there are people with different backgrounds, uh, different races, different cultures, different financial standings, that they come together and they worship Christ together. Because that is not natural, right? We are just geared to, he looks like me, I'm going to associate with him. And what, what, what he's saying here is that, man, the church, like that's, that's why we, we want to be a church that like reaches people of all ages, right? All financial positions, all whatever race, whatever you want to put in there, right? Because that, that is the picture of what we will see in heaven. He said, what, what is a greater evidence to people outside the church than these people that probably shouldn't be getting along are unified? Right? It's proof of who we say we love. That's why it's so important that when we come together, when we claim to be the body of Christ, that no matter what our, our backgrounds are, that we are unified in the bond of peace. Why? Because we understand that what unites us is far greater than anything that would try to divide us. And Satan over and over has tried and will continue to try to divide the church. So if possible, live at peace with all men. And so this is how people will be drawn to Jesus. This is what Craig Rochelle says, all right? Your life is too short. Your calling is too great to be offended by something small. I mean, the the mission of Christ, the mission of the church, is way bigger than any offense you might have. We would not get hung up on these offenses. Listen to what it says in in Proverbs chapter 19, uh, verse 11. And when we get to the end of this verse, right, the last three words, I want you guys to read out loud, all right? You guys prepared to do that? 
All right, nine, Proverbs 19.11, it says, Those with good sense are slow to anger. Many would say, I, I don't have a lot of sense, right? Like, but those with good sense are slow to anger, and it is their glory to what? It is to your glory to overlook an offense. And that word overlook, it's the Hebrew word avar, all right? What does it mean? It means to pass over. Right, it's to get above it. And unfortunately, when, when we are offended, rather than getting above the drama, we tend to like to get in the middle of the drama. And it says, it is to your glory when you are offended to just get above it. Get over it. Right, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to turn to somebody next to you. And you may be thinking of something specific. And I want you to say, get over it. I'm going to choose to get over it. This is what I'd say to my kids. Cry me a river, build a bridge, and get over it. Right? Just build a bridge and get over it. That's what he's saying here. Like, to overlook an offense is that I'm, I'm going to get above it. Now, to, to get above it, to overlook it, it, it doesn't mean that I'm going to pretend it didn't happen. It doesn't even necessarily mean that they're off the hook. Well, what it means is that I'm going to choose to practice or to live in real-time forgiveness. Right? When I consider the mercies of God, in view of the mercies of God, I'm going to build a bridge. I'm going to get over it. Verse 18 again, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If possible. And you think about that question. Is it possible to live at peace with everyone? I would say probably not. Right? There are some people in your life that are never going to give you peace. Right? They're not going to live at peace with you. But your responsibility is, is for you to do your part. Right? That I'm going to live peaceably with them. I can't, you are not responsible for how other people respond to you. But you have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to live at peace with them. So what can I do to live peaceably, peaceably with everyone? Right, because there's some of you right now that you're worried, you're, you're thinking about Christmas dinner, you're thinking about being in that house, and you're thinking about, I don't want to be in the kitchen alone with him or with her. Right? And that's just, that's just life. Like, it's not going to end peaceably. So how do we, when, when we think about practically, how do we live at peace with those who are unpeaceable? I don't even know if that's a word. All right? A couple things. First one is this. Be a living sacrifice. In light of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you, in view of the mercies of God, I present my body as what? A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Worship is not just a set of music on Sunday morning. Worship is a lifestyle. And so daily we wake up and we choose to, 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 to die to self. And when I reflect daily on his mercies, it makes it possible to die to self daily. But we get up and we, we lose sight of the mercies of God. As he, he says, and in light of his mercies, consider the mercies of God. And when you daily reflect on his mercies, it makes it possible to die to self daily. So be a living sacrifice. Second thing is walk in humility. Walk in humility. We are so, so many times we are so concerned with being right. There, there's a way to be right and do it in love. Speak the truth in love. Love doesn't seek to win the argument, but to protect the relationship. Now, I don't, I don't know if you're like me, but I have a tendency to want to just be right. And it just comes natural to me, right? I'm just right. I'm, I'm kidding. Right? But the goal in an argument, right, whether it's at work, whether it's with your spouse, is not to be right. It's not to win the argument. It's to protect the relationship. So walk in humility. Third thing is, loving you is a proof I love him. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. That the church, of all different backgrounds, chooses to love one another. That is proof to those who don't know Jesus that Jesus is Jesus. The last thing, number four, is get over it. Just get over it. 
being offended is unavoidable, but living offended is a personal choice. And the more you live in that offense, the more misery and the less peace you're going to experience. So I close with these two questions. Are you doing your best to live at peace with all men? If possible, live peaceably with all men. Are you doing your part? Again, you're not responsible for the other person. I'm responsible to, to, in the light of his mercies, to respond appropriately. The last question is this. Are you at peace with God? Because the reality is this. When we are born, we are born sinners. And we are born at war, at enmity with God. And that is the whole reason that God sent Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice. So that you and I could be back in peace. We could be back in relationship with God. But Jesus tells us in John 14, 6, that doesn't happen except through him. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Nobody can come to the Father. Right? Nobody can experience peace with God apart from Jesus. So are you at peace with God? Have you given your life to Christ? I'm going to ask you to, to close your eyes and to bow your heads. And I, I want you just to examine your own life. Are you at peace? Are you at peace? If you're not dying to self daily, you're not living at peace with those around you. Right? Because he's, he says to walk in humility. To be able to, to get down and, and to serve those beneath you. And if you're filled with pride, you're empty of peace. May we learn to, to, to be a living sacrifice. And we learn to, to walk in humility. God, I, I pray that you would be with those right now that they're just struggling with maybe a group of people, maybe a certain person. But there's just no peace. Now, may we examine our lives first. Are, are we doing our part? In light, in light of your mercies, in view of your mercies, am I responding accordingly? That we would die to self daily, that we would walk in humility. That we would just learn to just get over it, give it to you. I'm going to ask you, how many say with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, how many say, Michael, would you just pray for me? There's, there's some people in my life, there's a person in my life that I'm just not at peace with, and I, and I want to do my part, uh, as, as Paul says, if possible. I'm, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to walk in humility. I'm going to die to self daily. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you, that you would be able to experience this peace. God, I pray that you'd be those who raise their hand. May they walk in humility towards that person, towards those people. And God, this is not to take light of the offense that was done to them. But as we consider, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, as we consider what you have done for us, may we learn to overlook the offense. God, I pray that you would just give us the, the strength through Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, to live peaceably with all men. I pray that you be at those people in the room. There, there may be some people here that do not have a relationship with God. They are at, at war with you. And that they would understand that Jesus loved them so much that he gave his life for them. And they would receive the, the good news, the gift of salvation. God, may we live peaceably with all men. I'm going to ask you with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, would you just stand with me? We're going to continue to worship. And maybe you, you just need somebody to pray with. And I encourage you, the altar is open. If you want to come spend some time in prayer, at the end of the, the service, we'll have a prayer team that's up here available uh, for you to pray with. They would love to come alongside you and pray with you. But I want to encourage you this week, would you examine your life and just ask, am I in light of what Jesus has done for me, 
Am I living for myself or am I dying to self daily? That we would present our bodies as a living sacrifice. A family high from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door Was for this a child was born To save the world so cold and Sleeping town, they did not know the lion.
defile. Build a bridge and get over it. Say that. That, that may seem a bit uh, spiteful to say, or almost feels good to say, doesn't it? It's pithy, it's kind of cute, it has a lot of meaning in that statement. Build a bridge and get over it. It will preach. Ephesians 4, verses 2 to 3 that we looked at really summed that up. It says, with all humility and gentleness and with patience, bearing with one another in love. That's the building a bridge part. Don't just get over it. Build a bridge and get over it. Build a bridge over the problem, over the strife, over the ease of being offended and taking offense, over the ease of having to be right. It's kind of like take the high road, right? God has called us to reflect His character, and He gives us the power to do it by the indwelling of His Holy Spirit. And one of the quickest ways that we can reflect Christ, we can live out Christ, is to live peaceably with all people when it's possible. And we do that by building a bridge. We have humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, even making effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Peace for all and goodwill toward all men. We talk about that a lot at Christmas time. And at our house, when our, our boys were not living, living peaceably with each other, uh, we would have them actually write Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 3, about five times. And then we would check it, make sure they did write it out, and, and we'd talk about that verse. So when you see one of my boys today, ask them if they can quote Ephesians 4, at least verse 2 and 3, and I'm sure at least one of them can. But it is such a need for us to take responsibility to live out Christ likeness, letting Christ live through us. When we can't have peace, God can, and He can live through you, and that's what He calls us to do. And that's what it means to follow Christ. So, God, we, we come before God and we humbly ask Him to live His life through us. We give Him the freedom to do that, rely upon Him, we yield to His Spirit, and then Christmas is to all and to all a good night, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's pray for that. God, I ask your blessing upon us as we go forth here to live out what Christmas is truly about. We give ourselves to you, that you would live through us. We present ourselves as living sacrifices, and we yield to you. Help us, God, to love others when we can't love them with your love and your peace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, before you leave, let me uh, make a correction. Uh, the ladies' Christmas party is actually Sunday, December 19th. Sunday, okay? Have a great week.